Today, we're doing a quick little talk about what's going on with the channel, where it's going next, and how it's going to help you. Hi, YouTube. Welcome back. My name is Cassie, and you are watching The Victorian Thimble. We're going to take a break from sewing for just a few minutes to talk about how this channel is going to help you going forward and what's going on around here with The Victorian Thimble. We're just going to have a quick talk today and then we're going to get back to the sewing projects on the next video, I promise. A quick update on where things have been since my last post. If you recall, the last post I put up on YouTube, I did describe to you that I accepted a small pay job for a friend converting some stuffed animals into puppets. That has taken me a little over a week to get those done and I decided to not turn the camera on because it's not my project. And I don't know when my friend is going live with their YouTube channel, so I didn't want to take away from any of that for my friend. So therefore, that was pretty much a week of the camera just being off. So my now, in that same most recent post, you'll recall that I did tell you I have a dress to hem for my friend, Christine. Christine, thank you for waiting. <laughs> My friend is traveling right now, so she's still not looking for the dress this week, thank goodness, because it is still not done. I've had this thing for several months now. I did the other three pieces and got them back to her like within two weeks or less, and then this one piece has been lingering forever. I don't know why. So I'm committed to following through. We're going to finish hemming that dress. It's such a basic job. It should be one evening of work, so we're going to finish the dress, and then I do have one more project before we get back to fun stuff is my doggy. She is older, she's unwell. Um, actually, she's dying of liver cancer. We probably only have a few more months with her, but I just treasure every day. So along with her health problems, she has a massive lipoma on her back leg, the inner leg. Picture, if you will, like a little more than a half of a volleyball. That's about the size of her lipoma. It's absolutely huge. So before I get back to fun projects, I'm gonna hem that dress and then I'm gonna take a quick project to make a little support garment for my doggy, at least for when we take her out for walks and stuff to just try and bring her some relief. And I'll share those things with you. I have no problem turning on the camera for those. But then after that, I must have a thousand sewing projects I could do or it feels like it. But here's first of all, what I'm gonna do for you guys is we're gonna make sure we do Raynard Fox next. All right, so we're gonna hem the dress make a support garment for my dog. Both of these should not take that long to do. And then finally, before we finish this jacket or do any of the other amazing things on my list, I promise you guys, we'll do Raynard Fox next because I know you guys have been waiting for like months for the tutorial and just to see the video come to be. So promise you guys, that'll be coming next. So I just thought a visual would be nice too to show you guys a little bit of the sequence of what's coming up. So if you guys recall, I have this beautiful dress. It is my friend's dress. Um, and we're just trying to hem this up. I had a hem pinned. She wants it about five eighths of an inch shorter than what I had originally pinned. So I just have to repin the hem, cut it, stitch it, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. I have a hem to do. So that's gonna be next because my dear friend has been waiting far too long far more than what is socially acceptable. This thing's getting finished. The next thing, as I told you, is we're gonna make a support garment for my dog. So I got this fabric here. It's like mesh. Um, my thinking behind this is that with the mesh, it would um, allow some breathability for her skin still. And then I might put like a little polar fleece lining inside the little bump support that I make for when we go outside to keep the snow off her body but I'm legit worried about her skin splitting because the bump is that huge so you see this is um it's elastic but it's reflective like it should catch the you know traffic lights or whatever so just a little bit of increased safety there and honestly see again why are we doing a channel that's about saving money? Because all I do is talk to you about, oh, look how cheap I got this, right? I got this stuff again. I think it was a couple of bucks a meter. The elastic I ended up getting on sale. Um, 
I don't know, it, it was less than half price. I don't even remember what I paid, but needless to say, the support garment we're gonna make for the doggy is still cost effective because that's the way this girl rolls. So anyways, there's that. And then once we have, so those are the two biggies guys that has to be done, gotta drive them out by sheer commitment. If nothing else, it's been waiting far too long. But then once I have that done, Raynard Fox. Um, so here's what I had bought like last year. My goodness, I think it was last year around this time I had bought this fabric. That's how long we've been waiting for Raynard Fox to be finished. It's ridiculous. I know, we're fixing it. <laughs> so anyways, I was so happy when I saw this fabric, guys, because it is like a, a melting felt wool, right? Um, it's coating fabric. So it's quite thick. I'll try and show you if I hold it up to the camera, tilt it back and forth so you can see. It's actually pretty thick to the feel. Like in terms of its weight, it's like a really heavy denim in terms of its thickness. It's very thick. So it's going to be interesting to work with because possibly this is thicker than anything I've made any of our other Lunar friends with. But when I saw the color, it's just such a red fox color. I was so excited. And then I did get matching thread. Check this out. It's not a perfect match, but when you get the thread on it, it's, it's passable. This is a really tough color to match. I got a thread color that's pretty close. So this is what we're gonna use for Raynard Fox. And as you can see, it's not a very big piece of fabric because as you know, these dolls, they're small patterns. They don't actually take up a lot of room and they look so cute when they're done. So this is what we're using for Raynard Fox. And then this is, again, just sort of like, a, this was from a sale bin. It's sort of a pinky color. It's almost like pale pink meets ivory. It's a really subdued pink. But I thought this would be good for, you know, like the little face accents or inside the ears and stuff. You need that contrasting fabric. What I did like is it's pretty much as thick as that. So things should perform together nicely. So that's gonna be Raynard Fox's accent colors. As long as it works together, hopefully I won't change my mind. And that is gonna be his body. And then finally, once we get past that, before I get back to sewing clothes, finishing jackets, making pajama pants and the gazillion, I have so many cool projects, guys. Um, this is what I had bought for Clementine Cat. Um, if you remember in the book, she has a really fun, pretty little tulle skirt and it's made with a couple of different layers and I think it had like around, just around the empire waist, like a little velvet ribbon. I do have some sort of velvet ribbon somewhere, but I had got this fabric here that I wanna wear something on this. I, I think it's so, beautiful oh my gosh it's gorgeous I just like the delicate little rosettes it, it's very mm, it's just so pretty it's just 100% cotton is crafting fabric or like quilting fabric and then I found this tool that like see the colors like they just pick up together so nicely now in the book um, Clementine's skirt has a few different layers of tool so what I had done I have this soft ivory white tool, and this stuff is like super soft. This is off the end of a skirt that I had hemmed for a friend. That might be a video on my channel that I posted last summer. So this is just some leftover tool from that. So this works good because this is about the same thickness of like how big the mesh is as this, slightly stiffer. And then I had picked up this bright white netting, this tool netting stuff. This is quite stiff by comparison. So the plan here is this is gonna be the under layer for, of the tool to bring some support. And then let me just put it so it's a little lighter. Oh, that's not gonna work. Let me show you. So then it'll end up with, you know, this stuff layering over top and being gathered. And then finally, We'll have this netting over. And by the time we end up with all the layers, trust me, it's gonna show up. It's gonna have some nice color. It's gonna look good. So that's some of the stuff that we're gonna be working on in the near future as described. First the dress, then the dog support, then Raynard Fox. 
and then let's get Clementine dressed and Rainer dressed. And of course, I have some clothes that I can't wait to sew. So there it is, guys. Thanks again for checking out all this stuff. Now, as far as Victorian Thimble and where is this channel going and what is going on? What I can tell you is that when I started the channel, I thought I wanted a historical sewing channel because I absolutely love the old fashioned fashions. I think they are so beautiful. And I've always wished I had an occasion I could wear a big long full leg skirt like that and just because it was just, I don't know, an outfit to wear and I might make a maxi skirt for the summer or something, believe it or not, I don't have anything like that. But anyways, um, what I started to realize as I was working on this channel is that um, first of all, I like to make sure that what I sew, I use if possible. And I did not like the idea that to build a historical sewing channel means I was gonna continue to produce expensive, beautiful garments that unless I donate them to a theater, they're probably gonna sit in a storage box and go unused except for the occasional event I might go to a cosplay or something. And I'm not sure I'm okay with that. That wasn't sitting all right with me. Um, one of the driving forces behind why I sew is I like to feel that I've saved money or that if I ended up spending the same as if I would have bought it retail by the time I buy all the fabric and supplies, that at least I'm choosing the fabrics and colors I want. I'm perfecting the fit to my body so it looks great on me. And then I get that creative outlet of working with my hands and crafting something really beautiful. So I had to be honest with myself and say, I'm not sure I really actually want a historical sewing channel anymore. And then the other part, if we take a really honest look in the mirror, look at my list of videos and you'll see there's like maybe two of them are actual stitched Victorian projects. I have a Victorian walking skirt I've done and I also have a chemise and drawers that I've done. And then I started to realize that there's not that many Victorian projects on my channel. Like, there's a couple of ones where I'm doing some talks about Victorian culture and things, but honestly, the majority of my channel is anything but a historical sewing channel. So I decided that I had to be honest with myself, that I'm not comfortable producing garments that I'm not sure if I'm gonna use them, and the content of my channel isn't really reflecting a historical sewing channel. So are you ready for it? Here comes the big change we're gonna do here, everyone. I am gonna change the channel name. In order to continue to invite people to our sewing community here and grow the channel, grow our viewers, I think if you see the words, the Victorian thimble, you're thinking it's probably historical sewing. I wish to open that up to more people to enjoy. So I'm gonna change the name and it is out of a, a necessity to reflect really what my channel's about. And so the name that I chose is Cassie Sews. Very simple, just a verb, Cassie sews, where you can come and watch me sew. The driving heart behind the channel is going to be that we are here because I'm inviting you to join me as we are gonna sew high quality, slow fashion items, be they clothing items or crafting items. Whatever we put our needle and thread to, it is going to be of good quality and slow fashion environmentally conscious focused from your home sewing machine. If you'll hang out with me and join me on this journey, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how you can keep bringing your A game with your sewing and improve your projects all the time. In addition to that, I will be planning and inviting you guys on sew alongs where there'll be patterns available. And if I can manage it, I'm even gonna make kits that I can give away so that some of you can get the exact same supplies as I have and we can work on these projects together. So what do you say? Would you like to come and sew with me? Would you like to be an environmentally conscious sewer that makes good quality things to curate your wardrobe and your home with lovely things to enjoy all the while with that end piece in mind about using our resources responsibly at the same time? Because that's where it's at for me, guys. I'm a do-it-yourselfer kind of girl. 
I love to do things. I love if I see something to say, well, how can I make that on my own and do it for half the price? Oh my gosh, I don't know why that lights me up, but it does. And this is why I love to sew is I like to do beautiful, unique things. I absolutely love working with my hands. Like I just, I get filled up inside from crafting things somehow. It makes me happy. And so I produce more. And then the idea of having a community here with you guys where we could join up together and work on these projects, we could share pictures the whole bit, I think it's gonna be really great. So anyways, there it is. Thanks for uh, tuning in and just listening to where the channel's going, what it's about. So that's it guys. I will see you next time with your needle and thread at our new channel, Cassie Sews. My name is Cassie and you are watching the Victorian Thimble. That probably looks really stiff, doesn't it? Put it up.